Hello everybody, welcome to Dum Dum VR, where a guy who doesn't know what he's talking about blabs about VR games on the internet. You ever wondered what uh, an alien looks like dressed up as a Roman? Yeah, me neither. Well, uh, this is a weird amalgamation of worlds uh, in this game here. Romans from Mars 360, developed by Sidekick. Uh, from what I've read, this game's been on the Gear VR for quite a while. Um, like more than a year. Uh, it was available well before the consumer version of the Gear VR came out. It's sort of a uh, shooting gallery castle defense game. Uh, no gamepad required, just uses a touchpad. It's, uh, you really only need to, like, a, like 120 degrees of view. I mean, it's all that really matters. Uh, nothing behind you or to the sides. So, you know, if you're sick of sitting in a swivel chair and playing games like that, well, maybe this is for you. Uh, it's a simple concept, you know, you tap the touchpad to uh, launch arrows from your crossbow at these Romans slash aliens who are trying to attack your castle. And, of course, you got upgrades and other stuff to en enhance and vary the experience, um, but that's essentially the basics. You know, destroying enemies uh, builds up your mana, which uh, can be used to call down Zeus's powers and, you know, destroy people with lightning, a more powerful attack. Take out more enemies, you know, in one hit by... Uh, swiping up on the touchpad. Uh, after each round, the gold you receive can be spent on upgrades like uh, increased hit radius, critical chance, increased rate of fire. You can pick up multiple upgrades in one round too, you know, just as much as you can afford. Um, and you can also pay a bit to recharge your mana, which was almost completely topped off at the end of each round anyway. You know, you accumulate it so fast while killing enemies. I thought there was really no sense in paying for it. A uh, cool feature I thought is you can you can switch between auto and manual fire by tapping on the switch to your right, and I thought it was really cool to have a, a setting like that so easily switchable at your fingertips. You know, it's not a menu; it's right there to be activated and turned off whenever you want. Uh, the auto setting only fires when there's enemies on the screen too, so when they show up, it just continues launching as fast as your rate of fire upgrade lets it go. Weirdly though, like every eight shots or something, it would stop firing for just a bit, and then it'd pick back up. And I, I have no idea if that's lag, you know, a bug, if it's on purpose. I, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me because it's supposed to be automatic, not automatic with occasional breaks. Anywho, uh, as the levels go along, you, uh, you encounter different enemies, uh, bombs that explode, you know, with a big hit radius and destroy other enemies. Armored guys, they take more hits to be destroyed, enemies that move quicker, enemies with shields. Uh, and, you know, the way you kind of progress through the game is it's got these chunks of three levels that are, you know, that's pretty much a world, is three levels. Once you beat those, you move on to the next world and move on to the next world. Uh, the demo version is basically the first world, so three little levels. In that demo, um, after those three levels, it pops up a preview of the full game and then if you pop back into play, your upgrades are right where you left off and it just repeats. So then after those three levels, same thing, end of trial, hop back in, your upgrades are still there. So uh, you can get a good experience playing around a few times uh, just from the demo. Overall, I think, uh, you know, like the mechanics in this game, I think everything plays fine. Uh, it feels really intuitive. Uh, it's very simple though, uh, but it just feels right. Um, projectile games are always fun and you know, being in first person, it's it's all the more improved, I think. That uh, auto and manual feature is is really nice, depending on how you want to play. Like I said, though, it's a little buggy because, you know, sometimes you're on auto and it, it just doesn't seem to kick into action as fast as it should. I found myself, like, manually tapping the touchpad at times just to get it started and then let the auto take over, which probably isn't how it was meant to work. Uh, I do think this game needs to be more difficult. I played for like an hour and a half and never even took any damage. Like, let alone have my castle destroyed. Um, it's too easy, which, you know, can be fun as you feel dominating and superior to all these aliens and you just crush the life out of them, but that, that only lasts so long, you know? I think it needs to be more challenging. I thought the art style was uh, was pretty cool. Uh, the the cute little aliens, colorful world, quirky little blend of, of Roman and alien design. You know, like you have these fully armored up aliens and you also have jetpacks. And uh, I did find the death animation the regular troops had pretty funny. Or 
overly violent, uh, <laughs> you explode their bodies and uh, knock their heads off. Uh, I did think it was a unified art style, you know? I think it looked it looked nice that the enemies, the backdrop, everything just, just looked unified, looked uh, consistent, pretty cool. As far as the sound goes, um, you, know, you got these little minion sounds from, from the aliens or Romans. Uh, a lot of other sound effects, too. But when there's a lot of enemies on the screen, you know, and the appearing sound starts to trip over itself, uh, you know, it's like triggering a new sound when an alien shows up, and that's happening one after the other after the other, and it just sort of trips over itself and cuts itself off. Um, musically, I thought it was really, really fitting, uh, the, the background sort of music they had. Um, it's kind of a blend of this ancient war style, you know, thundering drums and brass with, like, an eerie alien music, you know, like, Ooh. yeah, uh, pretty clever, I thought. Hardware-wise, um, as far as how things performed, I didn't have any overheating. Uh, I did have a few screen glitches here and there. The worst part, though, was this just noticeable lag when the screen started filling up with enemies. You know, it's mostly notable when you'd, you'd blow up like a bomb and it would stagger forward and then, then catch itself and go back to normal. It made me wish that there was just less non-gameplay related activity on the screen. Like, all the UFOs flying overhead aren't anything more than an aesthetic backdrop. You know, but they have to be working the processor that much more. Which, when your screen glitches, should be one of the first things on the chopping block. Uh, there were also what I'm gonna call, like, ghost imaging or double imaging. I, it was noticeable with the health flag and the treasure chest to your left. As I move my head around looking in that direction, there's like... A second image, slightly offset, real faded, that sort of lags behind the actual image as you turn your head. I've never seen that before in a game, so I'm not sure what it was. Um, I'll have to look for it. I don't know, maybe it's in other games too, but it, it doesn't look natural. So, uh, for, you know, Romans from Mars 360, it's, it's not the most original game genre or style, but I did think it was a unique twist. They use VR in a fun, albeit simple way. And you know how, you know, most Gear VR games feel kind of like mobile games? Well, this one really does. And that's that's because it is. You can also download this game. It's not VR capable, though. Not even in first person. But uh, the same gameplay style and everything on Google Play and the App Store. Um, so this game feels like a mobile game. It's a great experience for in and out type of play. It's not life-changing. Not supposed to be. But it's fun for a solid, you know, 20 or 30 minutes at a time. Uh, and I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, sometimes I'm I'm sick of always twirling around and making myself sick with these faster-paced games. Lots of personal head movement. Um, this game is simple, and I wouldn't knock it for that. And the demo is free. The full version is only $2.99, which I think is totally worth it if you understand what you're getting into. Thank you for watching, Dum Dum VR. This review was sponsored by Turnips. Thank you, Turnips. If you enjoyed this review, subscribe below, comment, like the video, share the video. Have you played Romans from Mars 360? What did you think of it? What do you think of uh, mobile-esque VR games like this? Let me know what you're thinking, and stay tuned for more reviews from Dum Dum VR.